Hey, hey, Lee fans, what's going on? <clears throat> it's, uh, I believe it's January, Friday, January the 14th. <clears throat> and um, I haven't talked to you guys since uh, since the Leafs beat the Oilers 4-2. So now that uh, the Leafs are back into the rhythm of playing games regularly and the schedule is pretty much back to normal, there's a lot more to talk about. So um this is the episode for this week and um man the leafs uh played a couple of exciting games uh they, they played the colorado avalanche last saturday and they played the vegas golden knights two very exciting games back to back that that colorado game was probably the best game of the season just two good teams going at it two high powered offenses it was it was quite it, definitely the most entertaining game of the season i think my second favorite game this season was the leafs um shootout lost to minnesota earlier in the season that was one hell of a game too just two powerhouse teams going at it and uh that's what we saw on the uh on january saturday january 8th um it's probably matthews's best game of the season he had one hell of a game. Could have easily had a hat trick in this game. Um, it's they came out flying. The Leafs came out absolutely flying. Had a great first period. Um, didn't end off the first period all that great. Um, kind of fell asleep. And you know, as the game went on, it's something that in the back of my head i always you know i kept thinking to myself they haven't played a lot of games lately their conditioning might not be great you don't know how symptoms affect players uh coming off COVID protocol and they're in a place like colorado where the altitude is high the air is thin and you know even though the score was 4-2 going into the third period you can see the Leafs tr tailing off and uh, kind of looking tired and fatigued and doing a lot of standing around. And it's what ultimately hurt them. Like there was that one play where Nathan McKinnon got tripped in front of the net or going to the net. And the Leafs just stopped skating and started looking around and they were waiting for a penalty to be called. But it, was, it wasn't a play that was going to be penalized. There's no penalty on the call. And, you know. Kale McCarr grabs the puck, wheels around, and puts the puck in the net. So it's it's just uh, that's one of those games where you know they started off great, you know, in the first period they dominated, and you know, as they started getting fatigued, their decision making was not good. A lot of standing around, and uh, it all ultimately hurt them. And the overtime wasn't great, although, you know, you could argue that um, that OT goal was kind of a weak goal by uh, Jack Campbell, but you know, it is what it is. When you don't play a lot of games over a 10-day or a 12-day span, you know, playing against such a good team and that stadium was absolutely rocking. Like that's, that's the kind of game you love to watch on a Saturday night, just a packed stadium. Fans are loud. You know, the Leafs are flying. The abs are flying. You know, it's, you know, like you watch Nathan McKinnon play and I, I can, I can kind of see now why it took, so long for him to become a household name where he's thought of as a legit superstar maybe top five in the nhl it's taken a while because you know you see a guy like austin matthews have a game like he did in colorado scoring his 21st and 22nd goal of the season starting off slow you know only being a now only being a couple of goals behind dry for the lead lead leaving goals and you know nathan mckinnon even though he looks great wheeling around and he's got plays and he's fast and he's hard on the puck and 
you know, hands are amazing. You know, he just scored his fifth goal in that game. He has five goals on the season. And th this is what holds Nathan McKinnon back. Um, you know, N Kale McCarr has 15 goals and Nathan McKinnon has five. And, you know, it, it's one of the things about Nathan McKinnon. You love the guy. You love the attitude. You love the person. You love his hunger to win. You love his his attitude in terms of getting better, evolving, becoming a more complete player. Like, you love everything about the guy. I'd want him on my team any day of the week. But, you know, coming into game 30-something and only having five goals for a player of his caliber is is a little disappointing to be honest with you like you know i i wouldn't accept five goals from tavares or nylander let alone a guy like mckinnon or matthews you know what i'm saying so it, it it's it's one of those things either way it, it was probably the best game of the season just atmosphere in the building two good teams going at it never saying die just grinded out hockey towards the end it didn't look like it was going to turn into that kind of game at the beginning after the first period anyways but i'm glad that it turned into a game you know that's not the i'm not the type of fan that gets upset because the leafs lost or you know all the stuff that you see on social media oh another 4-1 that stuff I didn't even I didn't even occur to me that they were up four one and then they gave up the lead. Stuff like that doesn't even occur to me. I it's not I don't have flashbacks. I uh, I bought myself a big boy a pair of big boy pants. I put them on and as a fan I live in today. I don't live in the past. It doesn't matter what happened five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, or two weeks ago. Um what your team does today and how good they are today is what matters the most. Edmonton Oilers got off to a, a very hot start. For instance, Edmonton Oilers got off to a crazy hot start. McDavid and Dreisaitl were destroying the league. And now Matthews is two goals behind Dreisaitl for top goal scorer. Edmonton is losing a bunch of games. They don't have goaltending. They don't have defense. You know, it's <laughs> Hyman turns out to be not the signing that they were expecting. And now they're super desperate about Evander Kane. And they're so desperate for Evander Kane to play on the left wing with McDavid that, you know, McDavid comes on tele national television and pretty much single handedly destroyed his rep. He says, I don't care what the fans think. I don't care what the fans like. I don't care what the media likes or thinks. We are in the business of winning, and I don't care what this guy has done in the past. We want Evander Kane on our team. And that gives the guy free reign to sign there and act like a goofball in a Canadian market. Like, imagine the the amount of media coverage this guy has gotten in a, in a market like san jose imagine if he was in a canadian division oh like a canadian team in a canadian market being being written and talked to on the day it just it's a disaster this guy wants to fight <laughs> he wants to fight youtubers in the ring to make money this guy's in so much debt he's uh declared bankruptcy he's he's a uh, he's got a gambling problem like it's a shit show. I wouldn't this guy. I wouldn't want Evander Kane near my Leafs at all. But you know that that's why I don't care about a month ago, two weeks ago. Like it, none of this matters to me because the Edmonton Oilers were the kings of the NHL, and now they're just they're what they were a mediocre team. And uh, you know what I like about what's going on today is that the Leafs are picking up points. They're grinding out games. They're winning games. And, you know, I, I, I think the Leafs have lost eight or nine games in regulation all season. The Montreal Canadiens have seven wins this year, and the Leafs have eight regulation losses. 
what a difference a year makes, eh? Uh, yeah, so the Colorado game was amazing. And um, then we had the uh, the Vegas game. It's another game where the Leafs score. And, um, you know, w William Nylander kicks off the scoring uh, with an amazing play by uh, Morgan Riley. Just great pass right on his tape. He walks in and he does a forward back. He does like a little fake. And Robin Leonard bites all the way, and he, and he scores a beautiful goal to start off that game. Uh, Vegas ties it up, and then Matthews and Mikheyev go to work. The Leafs are up 3-1, going into the third period. And unfortunately, they give up the lead again, and uh, they end up winning in a, in a shootout. So Matthews gets another goal, his 23rd of the season in this game. William Nylander and John Tavares didn't have a great game. Their line wasn't great, but, you know, Nylander does score a goal to start off the game and then scores the shootout winner. So that's why you have great players. That's why you sign highly offensive, highly talented players because even on an off night, you just give them one chance and they put the puck in the net, and that's what Nylander does to start off the game. And scores a beautiful goal in the shootout. And the Leafs get two points. And that's what you got to do. You got to find ways to accumulate points. You got to bank the points that you can because the season is weird. You know, it's because of COVID or whatever re reason, you know, it, your season could derail very quickly. Um, you know, it's look how weird of a season it's been for Mitch Marner. I haven't seen this guy in so long. It's it's like he's he it it's like he's on an island on his own. It's like he's not even part of the Leafs. I've I've barely seen Marner all season. He got hurt. Then he was on COVID protocol. So you know, uh, I I know there are some people online making excuses for the Vegas Golden Knights that they didn't have certain players in the lineup, and the Leafs didn't have Marner. So it is what it is. It, it, that's another great game like the Vegas Golden Knights are a very good team and the Leafs are a good team and that's what I want to see I want to see good teams go at it and fight hard for wins and points and um you know you want to be on the edge of your seat you want to you're, you're dying for um you know your team to play well and get points and then nothing gets me out of my seat more than what Matthews does really but then you see Ilya Mikheyev score that goal, <laughs> and he's he's been really good lately. Like it, it's it's one of those things where we said all all lot all of last season this guy gets so many chances, the dam's gonna break eventually, and when it does, this guy's gonna become a regular contributor because he's got the speed, he's got the hands, and he does something you know uh, us fans scream at the players to do all the time, which is use your speed, drive outside, and drive to the net. Take the puck to the net, and he does that on a, on a regular basis. So, um, he's like a, he's like a Russian Josh Anderson on the Montreal Canadiens. Like, the guy uses his speed, he goes to the outside, he cuts inside to the net, and he scores, and, and that's pretty much all Josh, Josh Anderson has in his re repertoire. He doesn't really have the hands to deke around people and score goals, but he uses his, his strength and his size and his speed. And Ilya Mikheyev is like that guy. He's like a Russian Josh Anderson. So um, it seems like the dam has broken and, and now he's scoring and he's helping out and, and the Leafs could really use that supplemental scoring because... You know, you see Matthews score twice against Colorado and then William Nylander and Austin Matthews score against Vegas, but there's not a lot of supplemental scoring there. So, you know, Nick Ritchie scored against the Avs as well on the power play, which which is, you know, it's one of those things I love about Wayne Simmons. He doesn't, he does he's not a difference maker every single night, but then you see him draw a penalty, and then once he draws that penalty on the power play in front of the net, he makes a great play to Wayne Simmons, 
and Wayne uh, and Wayne Simmons. Wayne Simmons in front of the net makes a great play to Nick Ritchie and Nick Ritchie, you know, who's going to be out of the lineup real soon. Once everybody gets back, and he scores a goal, so you gotta love Sims for that. And then um, Austin Matthews goes home to Arizona, and you know it wasn't a game where I was on the edge of my seat. It was, it was one of those games where, after that first period, I'm like, man. You know, earlier in the season, I was in, I was at the Scotiabank Arena, and the Leafs were playing the Pittsburgh Penguins, and they got shut out that night. And it really reminded me of that night, the Arizona game, because the Leafs were doing everything right. They were getting pucks to the net. They were shooting it, hitting posts. It just, you know, you knew it wasn't going to go in. And the only goal that did go in, Austin Matthews used his patented toe drag. His shock and awe X Factor ability. And uh he, he toe drags around the guy and then he risks a top corner. And you know, what does a goal need to do? But the Leafs had so many chances. And um Vemelka, Corel, Vemelka stands on his head. And the funny thing about that is you're probably never gonna hear of Corel Vemelka ever again, other than um, other than uh, this game where he stones the Leafs. This guy has a 330 goals against average on the season. Yes, he plays on a bad team, but, you know, it is what it is. And so the Leafs lose in Arizona, and they got Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, I believe. Saturday, Monday. Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday again, so... St. Louis, New Jersey, and the New York Rangers. New York Rangers are crazy good. I mean, like, it just goes to show you what good, good goaltending does. And Shesterkin has been amazing for the New York Rangers this season. And it just, it makes you so much better when you're, when you're confident in your goalie and you just, you can, re you can just relax and know that your goalie's got your back and you could just fly up the ice and use your speed and Zabinajad and Panarin and all these guys are putting in pucks in the net left and right and just you take off like it, it's what Edmonton needs Edmonton needs a Shesterkin they need you know one of the goalies in Washington you know it takes someone very knowledgeable and someone who watches a lot of games around the NHL to be able to name the two goalies in Washington or to be able to name the two goalies in, in New York. There's a lot of teams that are good and they have, you know, these no name brand goalies like Pittsburgh didn't get off to a great start and their goaltending hasn't changed. It's still Jari and D Smith, but now all of a sudden they win like 10 in a row. Like, it's it's it makes a world of difference when you get good goaltending and the Edmonton Oilers need to figure out you know stop spending money on guys like Hyman go out and get a goaltender you could have had Freddie for four and a half you could have had Darcy Kemper you could have had anti anti Ronta like Coyotes traded this guy at 50 percent of his salary like go out and get a goaltender why do you keep spending you're not the Leafs you can't go out and spend you know Fifty million dollars on four forwards or five forwards. Leafs have goaltending. Leafs have defense, and you guys don't, unfortunately. Like, you know who who would have thought that a, a team with uh, Cody CC and Tyson Berry on defense would be a bad defensive team? But here we are, right? So it's been an interesting week. Um, Travis Dermott in that Arizona game, you know, really coughs up the puck and really made a big mistake and coughs up the puck for that first goal. And unfortunately, Sandine wasn't in that game in Arizona because of cap issues. And you see what happens when R Rasmus Sandin is in and uh, Travis Dermott plays because all of a sudden you get a, you get a, 
a brain fart like that and it costs you a goal and the Leafs are all of a sudden down to a team that's just putting everyone in front of the net and just blocking shots left and right. I, I don't know how many shots they blocked in real life. I don't think the scorecard reflects the true number of block shots because they look like every slap shot was hitting somebody. So, you know, Travis Dermott still has a long way to go. And uh, I think after this contract is done, I don't think Dermott comes back unless he's signing for dirt cheap. The Leafs are going to move on and Lilligren and Sandine are, are the guys on entry level contracts. Um, uh, You know, they could even trade him at the deadline. Uh. You know, for sure, uh, Justin Hall is going to get traded because he is definitely not the answer in the top four. And uh, the Leafs need a better player in that position to go into the playoffs. If they want to make a deep run, you need a better, better player than Justin Hall. You know, if you get a player and that moves Justin Hall down to the third pairing, then that's fine. He can play there, but, and then you have Sandine as a healthy scratch or whatever, but going into the playoffs, you need something better than Justin Hall. And, um, you know, guys like Lilligren and, and Sandine may be too young and inex inexperienced to really take that big leap in the playoffs. You never know. But, you know, the Leafs definitely need to add to their defense if they're going to make a run this year. If they're going to win a round and they're going to go, they need a better player than Justin Hall in that position where he is currently. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, the trade deadline is just around the corner. It's coming. It's coming soon. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with taxi squads and Canadian rules as opposed to American rules. COVID. Definitely the five-day quarantine instead of the 10-day quarantine is going to help. But it's going to be interesting what happens. Canadian, t well, it's clear right now in Canada. The Leafs are the best team. They're they're the 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 best hope for a Canadian Stanley Cup is the Leafs. The Edmonton Oilers are not good enough. No defense, no goaltending. The Jets, you know. Who would have ever thought that like Hellebuck would ha be having a season like this? I think he's given up like the most goals or something like that. He is not having a good season and they can't score all that well. And they lost one nothing to the Coyotes earlier this season as well. So it's they've definitely had a uh, had a bumpy season and and things are getting rough for them. So and then you know, we have to. Cal we have Calgary and Ottawa and Montreal and you know it is what it is so we'll see how that goes um I will see you guys next Thursday or next Friday and uh we will be talking about you know St. Louis New Jersey New York Rangers there's going to be three good games and then we're almost in February. Wow. Where's the time going? This season is flying by. We're almost in February. And then it's March. And then there's only a month left into the season. Hey, congratulations to Jack Campbell, who made the All-Star team. Ooh I did not see this coming. Um, the fans have voted well. Um, it's it's him and Vasilevsky, and Austin Matthews has been named one of the four captains. Shocker. Um, so that's good. We got two Leafs going, and if you haven't seen yet, there's a last man in vote, and you can vote for John Tavares to make it as well. So go in there, give the man a vote. Um, considering what happened uh, last year in the playoffs, and we thought maybe, you know, it looked like his career may have been over at that moment. But, you know, he's come back and he's played well this season. He's on a 35 goal pace and uh, he's been very consistent. So do a favor, go vote for your captain. 
The man's having a good season. He deserves to be at the All-Star game. So <clears throat> um, go online and vote. I've already done my, I've already voted for him yesterday and today. I will do so again tomorrow. JT deserves it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, if I was personally going to nominate a player, I probably <clears throat> would have chosen I don't know why I'm choking on my own spit. I would have chosen Nylander over Tavares just because of the season he's having. But at the end of the day, Tavares is just as good. So um, go ahead and go online and vote. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next week.